Today we're going to show you how to remove the intake on a Porsche 955. I'm Justin. Hey, and I'm Cousin Rob, the Cayenne Whisperer. And today we're going to take the intake off of our vehicle. So before we go too much further though, I want you to go and subscribe down below for more great content like this. So what we're going to show you today is how to remove that intake so that you can see whether you've got the plastic coolant pipes, how you can replace the thermostat, and just how to get under that uh, intake. So let's get started. Yeah, and just a couple things before we start. There are some tricky gotchas. That's why we want to show this. I've removed an intake multiple times, so I know how to do it now. And it's, uh, it's, it's not hard, but it's not easy either. And we're going to show you the tips and tricks. As we start to remove this intake, there's a certain number of steps. Certainly you see all the beauty pieces are off of the motor here. We have to start by removing these two covers here. But before we do that, we've got to remove these two secondary air pumps. So I'm going to show you how to remove them. There's uh, three, you use uh, a 40, uh, a T40. It's going to remove three uh, fittings. And then there is a pipe or a hose that we have to disconnect and one wiring harness. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Okay, let's get started. So after we've loosened the uh, three uh, T40 um, bolts, we've got to just go ahead and pull off this hose, right? And then you can see this is now pretty loose. And there's a there's a electrical connector that's right here. So we're going to pull that out, and then we're going to uh, disconnect it. To remove the secondary air pipe on either side, there's three T40 bolts. Um, they're, what's nice about them, they just have a couple, they just are kind of a little bit tight. Once you do that initial loosen, then you can hand thread them out. Then there's a small hose that goes on there. This is obviously the hose that creates the vacuum for the secondary air pump. And there is a connection. Um, I like to use a screwdriver and push it in to loosen it and then it just pulls right out. Okay. Once that happens, take it out. We're gonna need to put that aside. We do that on both sides. Yes, we do that on both sides. Our next step then is to remove these covers. To remove these covers, we have just these four bolts on this oh, side. Oh, wait a minute, not so fast. Okay. <laughs> on this side, there's a little bit more because okay. this is part of the, uh, this is the torque arm, right? Oh yeah. And we're gonna have to loosen this using a, a 16 uh, a millimeter bolt and then a, a what's called a triple square socket. And then we use a 16 here. We have to pull this up out of the way. Oh really? But to get it, to get access to this, this bolt to loosen it, we also have to take off this other air pump. Oh wow. So these are secondary pumps. And I, I don't know, what is this, a tertiary air pump? <laughs> <laughs> but, we'll, but good news about that. This is very easy. There's a couple of connectors. There's one hose and then two 10 millimeter uh, bolts. It, it's very, and, and one electrical connection. It's very easy to take off. Excellent. But that gives us access that side. Once this is loose, we can then take off this bracket here and we can get to these, um, get, get that cover so off. If someone needed that torque uh, arm corrected, this would be a good time to replace that. It, it really, it's actually really easy to replace, right? right? And I have inspected the torque arm in this one. All the, the rubber pieces are in really good shape. Okay. Um, so th this one's in great shape. Um, it actually may have been replaced because it looks pretty new. Yeah. Um, but, but we essentially have to get this off so that we can get down to some access to some bolts that are under here. So on this side to get to this, you can see I've already taken out the two 10 millimeter bolts. They're really easy to get to. You'll need to take a pair of pliers and um, we'll need to utilize the pliers for this particular style of clamp. We're gonna squeeze the clamp and just move, move this back so where it's off that hose so we can pull this off. You can see now, there we go, that's one. And then there's a, a little fitting here that holds that in place, that's two. And the last thing we need to do is take this this connector out so if we look here i've got the cover off on this side and here we can see our coils so if you need to replace your coils these are all things that you're going to have to do to get these coils off of here now these coils are good this car runs like a champ and so we're not going to be replacing the coils but now we have access to remove this part on this side actually we did replace the coils did we yeah so that has brand new coils and plugs in it that's why they look so good that's why they look really clean that's right so Part of the challenge with this whole project and doing it all on YouTube is getting Rob to not work late at night at home. That's why we're in my cluttered garage now, so that I can slow down the progress and know what's happening for you guys. So these are the fittings that hold down that beauty panel that cover the uh, coils, the, okay. the coil packs. 
One of the challenges is that sometimes they get a little bit tight, they run down into the bolt that covers the, um, the coil pack, that connects the coil pack to the, in, actually into the car. And so what we're gonna have to do, we have one that's done that on the other side, we're gonna have to reach under and grab that with a pair of pliers and still, and, and, sure and pull, and, yeah, to make sure it bites, right? Okay. So basically we were able to uh, take this part off after we were able to, we moved, we, we removed that, that torque arm. Right, and we just slide it up to take them off. Yeah, it, this one has to, you have to jiggle a little bit, but as you can yeah. see, it does come off pretty easy. There, yeah, there is some finagling because they both fit underneath these brackets. So That's you're going to have to wiggle it. It'll come out. Just be careful. A little back and forth will be fine. This one's just a little closer. This particular right. bracket's just a little harder to deal with. So Rob, now we've got our side covers off. We've 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 got access to these bolts. What's next? Yeah. So we're going to. So they call this the uh, air charger. That's what Porsche calls it. Basically, okay. it's the air. It's the plenum that combines the cold intake from either side of the motor and runs it up through the uh, throttle body. Okay. So we're going to need to go ahead and take this part off. These actually stay in. Okay. So we're going to take this part off. Then we're going to take off the throttle body and all the associated wiring around the throttle body. Under normal circumstances, we remove this stuff. This would be a way that you could check to whether your, your pipes were replaced with the metal ones once this is off the front, right? That's what we're going to check. Yeah, okay, we're, we're going to. So a lot of people ask, you know, when folks are selling a Cayenne with a V8, hey, did you change out the plastic pipes for the metal ones? Um, what I contend is that if you want to check, you don't really need to get all the, this thing all the way off. I think there's a there's a, 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 a sneak hole where we can actually peek in and see if that's the case. Now we have, so this is, I, the reason I, I took these clips out is there's two plastic, plastic um, restraining, I'm not really going to call them bolts, let's say restraining fasteners. Okay. And what they do is they hold this air charger where it combines up against the throttle body. And okay. so you have to take them out. They do tend to get worn. So the best thing to do is we take our pliers and we simply pull them out. There's one, the pliers, and pull it out. Now, there's usually a key on the bottom. They break off after a while and Porsche says, oh, you should get a new one if they break. No, you don't really need to. They're not coming out. And actually, it makes them easier to, to, to put on and off if that key's off. Next thing you want to do, um, this is an eight millimeter bolt, but it's also a flathead screwdriver. We'll just want to loosen these. And once they're loose enough, you want to just slide it back. See how we slid, slid it back here over the, the, the charger hose? That just gets it out of the way. We'll do that with the other one as well. So now it's loose. So now actually we can start to pull this apart. This is one of the pro tips, hose picks. Okay. These things are brilliant. The, the kit itself, they're available on Amazon. We'll, we'll put a link in, right? Excellent. What this allows us to do is go around the side of these hoses and a lot of times unstick them. Oh, the problem yeah. with hoses a lot of times- You gotta torque yeah, them. Yeah, you gotta torque them, right? So what this does is this loosens it for you. You just kind of get in here and see how I can just kind of work my way around the hose pretty far, right? And then we simply take one side off like that. We come over to the other side, we take that side off like that. So this thing's ready to come off, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get it to about there. There's one fitting on the bottom. Okay, I see it. It's this bad boy right here. So just, I'm gonna ask you okay. to hold this up here like this for me. All right. I'm gonna reach under here. Yeah, you, got, yeah, yeah. you gotta grab it and pull it down. Yeah, there you go, yeah. perfect. Off it comes. So just for clarity, this is the last thing we unclipped here. You see there's these little buttons. You just have to give it a good yank. Then we've got the various parts and we're off. So do we need to take the throttle body off next? Yes, we do. So it's it also it's actually pretty easy to come off as well. It once again uses a Torx 30. Okay. We're going to need to put a little extension on it. I think we've got one right here. We may need a longer one for the bottom. We're just going to just loosen them a little bit. Okay. Loosen all four. Once again, it's just, just loosen them a little bit. Then we will hand thread them out. There's a trick to this throttle body. Once you disconnect it and take it off, you have to let it reprogram itself, correct? That's correct. So when we put everything back together, we're gonna to do key on. We're gonna wait about 60 seconds. Um, we'll actually probably film it. You'll be able to hear it makes, it makes very distinct sounds. So what okay. it's doing is it's calibrating itself to the system ah. so that when you start the car, it knows you know, how much to open, et cetera. So in, unless it does that calibration, you actually find the car won't run well okay. because so, it hasn't calibrated. A lot of times it'll, it doesn't know what to do. So if you don't do that, you haven't broken it. You just have to calibrate. That, that's correct. You haven't, well, yeah, that's correct. Uh, <laughs> you might've you, you, you might broke it. There's, there we go. There we have the throttle body. Best practice. So you look at this and you say, oh, let me start messing with this, this 
Don't. Don't. Please don't. <laughs> that can break it. That's the bracket that holds some of the wiring and some of the harnesses for the front, right? And so now we have a way to see in there with the scope if we want to actually, see. Actually, what I'm thinking is the scope would come right down, right, right there. down through there. Okay. That's that's where so that's gonna... how you're going to look at it if you don't want to yeah. take everything off. Yes. Yes. To see if you need to take everything off. Yeah. That the problem is you. It's a. It, as you'll see as we go through this video, it's a pretty involved job to get to get right. this thing off. But I think by just doing these, this, this little bit here, but you can get this off if you have mod moderate mechanical knowledge in about 30, 40 minutes. Stick a camera down in there, you know, one of the ones on a wand, and right. we should be able to see those hoses and, you know, or those pipes, I think we should be good. And you've done that with this, so we yes. know we've yeah. already got yes, the Yes, that's correct, yes, here. yes. We'll show them for sure, but that's one way you can check it without having to take all of this stuff apart. If you have watched our What to Look For in a Cayenne video, you know that one of the important things to know about the Cayenne you're buying, whether it has plastic, coolant pipes or if they have been replaced because the plastic ones do rot out this is the part that we're talking about this is what you want on there that's not rotting out but we've already had the plenum off this so we already know it has this in here so we don't actually need this part however we do like to play with fun toys and rob brought a fun toy with us today I want to show you a cool tool that you can use to figure out whether you have metal or plastic without having to take all of this stuff off because it is a beast. So Rob, what kind of toy are we playing with today? So this is a, a camera that is basically on a flexible, um, a flexible wire. And what's nice about this, it syncs with your phone. This particular um, camera syncs with Wi-Fi. So it's, it, it, now it doesn't give you, you know, uh, what, 40 frames per second, um, but it shows you enough detail so that you can, in this case, do some inspection on cars. Mechanics use these to look inside cylinders. Uh, in this case, we're gonna actually uh, find out if this car has had the pipes uh, changed or not. We happen to know this one has, but that's what everybody asks as soon as uh, you put a Cayenne up for sale. Have the pipes been changed from plastic to metal? This helps to prove that. Let's at least show how we could use this, where we're gonna be looking to figure this yeah. out. On the back of the motor, there's a very small spot where there's a gap between um, where the, the deck where the pipes are and the top of the intake manifold. So that's what we're gonna show you right now. We're gonna, un we're gonna sync this up to my camera. We're gonna then uh, take the, the wire, this camera and feed it back under the intake manifold so that we can actually find a spot where we can do that. This is a cool tool to use and if you wanna buy one of these for yourself, check out the links below. We've got a link to where you can buy this one. So we can see we have metal coolant pipes here. You can see the coolant pipe right here and here we've got a bracket. If we had plastic, then these would both be black. Now this is a intense, very involved job, and it may not be something you wanna do. If you don't, highly recommend this tool. We will link to it below so that you can have a little scope, and, and it's also fun to play with. We, you know, put it inside noses and things. <laughs> no. exactly. Okay, so we've now got the throttle body off here, and we've got this, is this just a vacuum hose, Rob? No, it's, no, it's actually just a vent hose. Just a vent hose. So this vent hose covers what we need to get off, so we've gotta remove it be very careful with it. It's a 200 plus dollar part that's been on top of a V8 motor for 16 years now right. through all those heat cycles and all those things. Very delicate, be careful with it because if you break it, you're gonna have to pay up to replace it. So to remove this piece, there's little squeeze tabs like that part on the throttle body. Squeeze and pull gently and there you go. This does make it a little hard to work with, but that's what you have to deal with. As my father used to say, these German engineers didn't care about us when they came to building it. Now, as we go through all these various hoses, caution is the word of the day. You gotta kinda wiggle and get them out. They're all clipped on, so you should be able to remove them, but just be careful. We don't wanna get caught in a job like this and break a hose and have to start heading back and forth to Porsche. We all know how that goes. We're going to disconnect the, um, the electric input from each one of the eight uh, uh, fuel injectors. Okay. We're just, and then we're just gonna lay them out of the way. That's gonna give us access to kind of more stuff that we need to get to. Around the intake itself, there are 10 T40 um, fittings. Okay. These are actually embedded in the, um, uh, they're actually embedded in the intake themselves so that you can, you loosen them and then they're, they just kind of stay in there. They're, they yeah. just, they get floppy, right? Um, the good news is that if you do need to replace one, it's actually pretty easy. You just literally pop one out and pop the other one in. They are a bit expensive. They run about 20 bucks. So oh, really? be, be careful. For sure. You know, um, 
then once again, our whole challenge, the reason that we, at this point, if we could get to all 10 of these bolts on the, on, on the intake, uh, with the exception of, of basically coming up here and, and um, undoing the, uh, uh, the fuel line, we could take those 10 bolts out, we'd be able to, ready to, to pull the whole thing out. Our challenge is there's one particular bolt on the passenger, uh, the rear closest to the firewall, and unfortunately, it's directly underneath the fuel rail. So it's the one that's really hard to get to. So the reason that we have to loosen the fuel rail, we're not gonna take the fuel rail out, we're gonna loosen it and kind of set it aside, is just to get to that one bolt. We also need to disconnect all of the uh, fuel rail uh, uh, leads, right? How we do that is you reach underneath and there's a small clip. Okay. That clip just needs to be pressed in. Okay. And then the, 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 the uh, electric fitting just, just, yeah, press and pull. It's pretty easy. Okay, so we are just about wrapped up here. So a couple things you need to know when you're doing this. So first, when you take off that fuel line, that's a 17, right? That's correct, yes. Two 17s? Uh, no, it's a 17, I think, and a 19. Okay, but, but, but we, we use a slip joint. We line. use a slip, uh, really a slip wrench or a crescent wrench, right. which just holds it. So it's the, really, the one that, that unscrews is the, is the 17, so that's the threaded. Now, pro tip, you will need to put a rag underneath it because a little bit of gas is going to come out. Uh, if not, it's just going to yeah. come out all over. Yeah, probably a teaspoon or so. Not, it, not even it, it, it was a really small amount. The other pro tip is on the back of the fuel rail are two bolts. They're actually pretty hard to get to. So okay. Pro tip is put a little tiny piece of tape in it. That way, when you've got your fat, when you have your Allen wrench in there, it stays. Perfect. Great so pro tip. We're going to remove this last bolt and then we're going to take out this intake. This last one is a pain. Follow that pro tip. Get that tape on there and don't do it alone or you'll be under your car digging around on your armor plate trying to figure out how to get this thing out of there. Or buy extra bolts. Or buy extras. That also works. <laughs> Okay, so you can see we're holding the fuel rail up, kind of out of the way. Um, pro tip, do not remove these or turn this upside down, otherwise you will have about a cup of fuel spill out. Got Ask it. me how I know that. <laughs> so the whole reason we've done all of this is, in, we, we, is to get to this, this last fitting here. And it, the challenge is it's directly underneath the, um, it's directly okay. underneath the fuel rail. So we just need to position the fuel rail in such a way, give us access to that bolt. Now, we can just kind of put this back down. There we go. I'm going to go and remove the uh, um, vacuum lines from the back, and then we'll be able to pull the whole thing out. We've but we've got it down to the point where we just need to reach back there, okay. undo the vacuum lines. So there's three vacuum lines in the back. There's okay. two hoses. And remember this kind of clip right here? There's one of those as well. That one's a little harder to get to. Okay. But once you get all three of these out, um, this whole thing comes right out. Excellent. There we go. There we go. That's our intake out? Yep, that's our intake out. So that's our intake? along with our fuel rail, caught on my microphone, but so there we go, and there you can see the fittings on the back. And so now we'll show you what it looks like underneath this so you know what you're looking for. So now, while we've got this out, you always hear about the plastic pipes versus the metal pipe for the coolant. This is what the metal pipes is, and that's what you're replacing when you're replacing those things. That's why you would typically pull off this intake. We already have these on here, obviously, so that job's been done. We're gonna do what we need to do to fix this, and then we'll put it back together. Now, one other, if you don't mind, yeah, add well, one other pro tip. If you're going to do any work on here, um, especially if you're if you are going to get in and take the plastic pipes out, um, there's going to be a lot of metal uh, plastic shavings. The best thing to do is stick rags mm -hmm. down into each one of the into the into the intake ports. But the other bigger thing to do is go inside. There's a small access panel right by the driver's seat. There's an eight, 13 millimeter acorn nut. And what you do is you'll actually disconnect the battery. Because the last thing you want to do is hit any hit that charger because it is live. Okay, we still have a lot of pieces on the table and not in the engine compartment, but we've done all of the technical stuff, and now it's a matter of just putting everything back where it's supposed to go. So we're gonna get at it. Fastening bolts, connecting hoses. Yep. All right, Rob, we got it all back together. Let's fire it up. Oh, wait a minute, time out. Before, yeah, put that put that key away for a second. So yeah, we can fire it up, okay. but there's one really critical thing that we have to do. After everything's back together, um, you know, we did, dis we did disconnect and remove the throttle body. Yep. Anytime you put the throttle body back in, it has to talk to the, uh, uh, to the engine computer, the, the ECU, right? So there, it goes through a cycle. The good news is, and we're gonna watch it, we're gonna listen for it here in just a moment, it takes about a minute, 
and it makes some very distinct sounds as it cycles through its motion. What's happening is the motor's asking for it to open all the way, to close all the way, et cetera. What you don't want to have happen is go in and start it right away. It'll just open up all the way. It'll flood the motor and that potentially a cause a backfire, which is not a good thing. Yeah. All right, I've gone full Price is Right style here so that you can actually hear the calibration of the throttle body. So we're gonna fire it up and hear how it sounds. It is gonna sound a little bit rough as we get this started while the ECU continues to learn and calibrate, but then it's gonna settle in. So this is what it's gonna sound like. A little bit more. And that's what it's like when we get it started again. Seems to be running okay. And I think it yeah, just smells a little exhausty. All right, the Cayenne build coming together. It's running again. Where have you been? Huh? Where have you been? I've been here the entire time. Your hands don't look as dirty as ours. I've not, I've not been in the engine the entire time, but I've been here. So thanks for watching. This has been a great project today, putting this intake back on. You guys did a really great job. I enjoyed watching it. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Before we go too much further, please subscribe. And leave a comment. Especially if you didn't like what these two clowns are up to. Our next stop is to tune it. Join us for that. Thanks for watching. Come back and see us.